You know, when you're exploring functional programming, sooner or later you will encounter the concept of Mona. But what is it? Let's dive in and try to understand the concept. So first of all, you need to keep in mind that there's nothing magical about monads. A uh, monad is, in its essence, a name given to a triple. Um, the first element being the type constructor and uh, two method definitions. Additionally, uh, these three things must meet some additional sanity, sanity criteria. So uh, they are not completely arbitrary. Uh, but there's a lot of examples of monads which are very diverse, which you can, which you can give. And, and that is why people decided to give this triple a name, uh, because there's really a surprising amount of otherwise completely unrelated uh, type constructors for which you can define the, a monad. So having uh, a monad as a value in, uh, in your code uh, allows you to write code once, for, for any given monad uh, and then reuse it multiple times. And that is really the goal of any uh, abstraction. So some languages even introduce special syntax for dealing with monads, for example, uh, the do notation in Haskell or for comprehensions in Scala. But once again, remember that this is nothing magical. In this case, uh, it's just syntax sugar, which you can replace with normal method of function invocations if you prefer. Uh, before diving into monads, let's do a quick recap on what a type constructor is. Uh, so a type constructor is, uh, is for example, a list, uh, an optional future. So anything that has uh, one hole, which needs to be filled with a, a type to itself become uh, a type. So uh, we are using Scala as our base language, but these examples should translate quite straightforwardly to other languages where you have generics, so Java, Haskell, TypeScript, also C Sharp, and so on. So a type constructor takes a type and returns another type. Um, so list is a type constructor, right? Because it's not a type itself. We need to provide a type uh, in order for it to become one. So we can have a list of strings or we can have a list of ints, right? So these are distinct types. Similarly, an option and a future all have a single hole which needs to be filled in with a type. Um, in other words, you can think of it as a function which takes a type and returns a type. So a type level function. So now let's try to define the monad interface. So we will uh, define, uh, define the monad uh, as a trait, as an interface, and later we will provide some concrete implementations of that interface. So that interface is itself parameterized uh, with a type constructor, right? So it has a, a it, we will call it F, it's some type constructor, and we need to, uh, and it has a hole which needs to be filled with a specific type, right? So uh, we can provide, a, we can instantiate the monad with a type constructor such as a list, an option, or a future. So now the first method, uh, apart from the type constructor, the first method uh, that needs to be present in the monad is the pure method. So the pure method takes a value of any type, right? So this is a value of any type T, and it wraps uh, that value with our uh, type constructor, with our monad type. For example, uh, this can take a value and return a single a one element list, or it can take an element and return a future. So a future usually represents a computation which runs in the background and eventually yields a value of some type. So here the pure method which would um, would return a future which is already completed, right? So it puts our value in the context of the F type constructor. And the second thing that we need is the flat map function, which is slightly more complicated. So the flat map function, it takes a value which is already in the context, so it takes a wrapped value. And what it does, it unwraps uh, the value or the values that might be present over here. So this doesn't need to be a single value that is wrapped, it might be multiple or no values. So it wraps, it unwraps this type constructor somehow, whatever this means in, for the specific monad, and then it calls this function for these uh, for these unwrapped values, right? And and this again yields some kind of a wrapped value, which is the result of our invocation. So um, 
this is a very uh, generic and a very general interface. And then I said there's really a lot of completely unrelated type constructors for which you can define uh, these methods in a sane and correct way. So as a simplest example, uh, let's look at the list, right? So we have our interface over here um, and we will now implement uh, this interface. So we have a value. So this is a value of type monad and that's the implementation, right? The implementation of pure, as I said, returns um, a single element list. Flat map is trivial because there is a flat map method on the list. Let's look on an, on an example what it actually does. So if we take a list of three elements of three uh, numbers, one, two, three, and we flat map it with a function, the function takes an element and uh, duplicates the element into a list with two elements, right? So let's see what happens when we actually run it. So what we uh, get as a result is we get a flattened list uh, of each element being duplicated, right? So uh, this function over here is run for each element on the list. And this function for each element produces a list with the duplicated element. And then these lists are concatenated. So that's one example of how a monad might, uh, might work. But there are many more examples of monads. Uh, so uh, for example, here we have our list monad. In a similar way, we can define an option monad. So an option is a data type which can be empty or it can uh, hold some value. Um, as I mentioned, there's a future monad. So um, in a future, which is a computation which potentially runs in the background and eventually return um, a value of type t here. So the pure method simply returns a future which is already completed. And the flat map method sequences two futures together, right? So uh, after uh, this computation, the A computation is done. And when the computation yields a value of type t, um, the next step in the sequence. So the f function is applied to that, uh, to that value. And when this completes, uh, we will get uh, our resulting future uh, complete as well. Um, so that's the future monad. We can also define an IO monad. Uh, IO here is a data structure describing um, side effects in a purely functional way. So it's kind of a, like a lazy future. Uh, very convenient when you define um, concurrent computations. We can also define a trivial identity monad. So if we have a very simple type constructor, identity, right? It doesn't do anything with the type, just returns the type. But we can define a monad for it. And here, pure is simply returning the value and flat mapping is applying a function, the past function to the value, right? So it's something completely different from IO future list, but it's also a monad. Um, another example of a monad, completely different, is all functions from int to some type form a monad. So we can think of this int as a read-only context that is available for our computations. So here pure is a constant function which ignores the, uh, the context. Flat map uh, applies the context twice. So um, I think uh, that many tutorials really fail to deliver as they try to say a monad is something like, you know, some better known concept. And uh, this is simply not possible because monads vary vastly, right? You can give examples and that's what we do here, but none of these examples really generalizes to be representative of all monads, right? So there's no single example that you can give that will give you an intuition as to what uh, a monad is. As I mentioned, there are some sanity uh, criteria that need to be met by the uh, pure and flat map functions, though they're not completely arbitrary. So let's let's talk briefly about them. So we have our monad, um, we have our monad interface over here. We have our example implementation, and we can say that this implementation is indeed a monad if it meets three laws, right? So um, I won't go into detail of uh, all the laws over here, but there are various combinations of how you can combine a pure and flat map together. And they basically say that uh, things expect as you would, uh, as you would. For example, let's look at the left identity law, right? It's the simplest one. So it says if you have a value of type T, if you wrap it with your type constructor F, right, using pure, and then it, when you flat map 
an arbitrary f function, it is the same as calling f on the unwrapped value, right? In concrete terms, let's look at the law on list, right? On, on a list, let's say we have our duplication function over here, which takes an element and returns a list with this element duplicated. So the left identity law says that if we take a list of a single element, which is what pure does, and if we flat map it using the f function, it is the same as simply calling f on the unwrapped on the un unwrapped value. And you can verify that this will indeed return true, hopefully. And yes, we get true. Okay. Um, so you might wonder where will you actually encounter monads in the wild? So I think. Um, one of the first places where you might encounter monads is in libraries, because libraries tend to be much more general and generic and abstract uh, comparing to application code. So um, if you are writing a library and you would like to support many uh, different ways of representing side effects, monads might be a good choice. So here, for example, um, we have a, a program um, which looks up a user in some kind of database, let's say, and sends a message to the user, right? So we have a program, but it's written uh, in terms of any given moment, right? So our program takes a user ID, and that user ID, and it takes a function, which uh, given that user ID returns the user looked up maybe in a database or something like that, uh, with that ID, uh, but uh, the result is wrapped with our type constructor f, so it might be a future, for example, uh, it might be identity as well, right? So this function is potentially asynchronous, you can think about it this way. And then we have another function which sends uh, some message with the given body um, and returns, I don't know, an error code or something like that, right? And we have some very simple uh, control flow over here, so what we do is we and look up the user with the given ID, which gives us the, the user, but in the context of the of the monad, of the F, right? So we need to extract the user that, that was uh, looked up. We need to flat map. Uh, we need to call flat map, right? With a function, which provides the next step that should be done in our program. And the next step is that if the user that is found if the username starts with an A, then we send a message, and otherwise we return an error code, right? So this send message again returns uh, a computation, the result uh, in, uh, in the context of an F. Now this program will work with any monad, right? So as an example, uh, we can run the program. Let's run this so that we can see that it actually works. We can run this in the context of an ID monad. Right, so using synchronous uh, over here, using synchronous uh, code, so uh, everything happens uh, on the same thread and so on. So our user ID is ten. We always return Jack, which doesn't start with an A, right? So we will get one as a result. Uh, in the identity monad, the pure value, the pure function simply returns the given value, so we get a one. Um, we can also use the run the program using a list monad. A list monad, you can think of it as representing um, undetermined indeterminism. So uh, it is one of two possible outcomes over here, right? So we have our user ID, and we say that for that user ID, well, the user might be Adam or it might be Mary, right? So there's like a branch, um, and if we send a message, it always returns a zero error code. And we can see that for the first user that was being found, then we get a zero, and for the second, we get a one, right? So this is how we can model uh, something that is not deterministic. Finally, we can uh, use a future, which are asynchronous computations, uh, right? Same program, now, now running asynchronously. So for the user ID 12, well, our user lookup function, again, is very simple. It will always return a future uh, which in the background will compute the constant value Sophie, but it, it happens on another thread, right? Similarly, the message sending is asynchronous. And as a result, we get a future which is not completed at the time of the, when the, well, it completes really fast, right? Almost immediately, but at the time when this code is run, it's not yet 
um, completed. So, um, so yeah, so we've seen so we've seen uh, where monads might be useful. Um, when you uh, use monads uh, to represent side effects and to structure programs in that way, well, this is uh, really not. Uh, again, as an example, this is only a subset of monads. It can be used as a representative for all monads out there. Uh, but in this in this context, in this example, the monad and the flatma function specifically is something like a sequencing operator, right? So it is similar to a semicolon from imperative languages because it takes the result of the previous computation and it performs the next step. So here the flatma performs some kind of sequencing. But that's not true of all monads out there. So it is one way you can think about it, but it's not, it doesn't really generalize to all monads. Uh, but I think uh, using monads in libraries, for example, to abstract from the specific type effect that is being used is quite a popular way um, to understand monads. And that's, and that's really what, what a monad is. Uh, there is, of course, uh, oh, the thank you is, there is, of course, much more depth uh, to the concept and you can study it and so on, but I don't think you really need all that depth to use monad efficiently. Similar thing with gravity, right? We all know how gravity works. We can use it to our advantage. Um, we know the energy conservation, the motions and so on, but nobody really understands what gravity really, really is, right? And despite that, we manage to, to survive. So, some, so monads might be a somewhat uh, similar example. So remember that monad is just a name that people invented uh, to talk about three things, type constructor and two methods meeting some criteria. Um, and that's it really. So it's just a tool to communicate. When you say monad, um, people really know what you are talking uh, about quite quickly, that you are talking about that triplet. And there's a lot of resources out there on the web about various aspects of monads. There's a lot of monad tutorials, there's a lot of examples of using monads, there's a lot of material on representing side effects using monads. So I hope you will enjoy exploring functional programming further. Thank you.